Hi everyone, I'm Michael, your Yardy or Dr. Mike, and welcome to the MYK System channel. This is episode three in our series of comparing and contrasting other techniques with the MYK system. Today, we're gonna talk about Heller work. We'll give a brief history and description of what I could find out about this technique, and then we'll cover the similarities and the differences to the MYK system. If you want more information on either technique, I have the website links in the description below. Whether you're a patient looking to get help or a practitioner looking for a good technique to learn, this series is what you need. Let's dive in. How did Heller work start? Heller work was created by Joseph Heller. He was born in Poland in 1940. For the younger people, 1940 was one year after that German guy, Heisenfreisinggassen, that guy. Uh, when he invaded Poland in 1939, and this was the start of World War II. So poor old Joseph was born during a pretty bad time in Poland. He, when he was 16, he moved to the United States and he graduated from Caltech. He spent 10 years as an aerospace engineer. So I think it's safe to say that he was a pretty smart dude. He got involved with humanistic psychology and eventually, uh, eventually left engineering. He became the director of Kairos, which was the Center for Human Development. So here's the kind of, kind of the cool part. He did some training programs with the following things. So number one, Gestalt. Now, you may be saying, oh, Gestalt, nice. Because that's what I would do if somebody, hey, he trained with Gestalt. I would just nod my head and go, Gestalt, yeah, of course, okay, cool. So here, here is what Gestalt therapy is. Gestalt therapy helps the person understand what's actually happening in the moment rather than what's assumed to be happening based on past experiences. I think that would be pretty cool because it would make you change your thought patterns when things happen to you during the day. So I think that'd be kind of a neat thing to study. The second thing he studied was bioenergetic therapy. This says that physical and emotional health are connected and how to release both physical and emotional tension for better health. All right, kind of cool. He also studied with Virginia, I guess it's Satir, Satir, Satir. She was called the mother of family therapy. He studied with John Lilly. Okay, this guy was definitely out there. He's the guy that developed the deprivation tank. He was kind of a weird guy. His obsession was with mind travel and exploring alternate realities. And he often conducted his studies incorporating LSD. So the, uh, the 1980s movie Altered States was based off John and his deprivation tank. Number five, he studied with Buckminster Fuller. Okay, I've never met anybody named Buckminster before. So I looked it up and that was actually a pretty popular name from the 1840s to the 1920s. So that's kind of that's kind of different and I'm sure his friends probably just, you know, shortened it and just called him BM. So anyway, he <laughs> I say a lot of things just for my own humor. All right. He coined the term spaceship earth. Fuller, uh, which is, you know, we're all on here and it's it's like we're on a spaceship. We got to uh, recognize all of our resources are uh, limited and all that. So Fuller also developed the geodesic domes. These are those uh, half domes built with all the triangle looking things, which uh, end up making it stronger. Military uses it and all that kind of stuff. And then he also studied with Bro Joy. I think his guy's name is Bro. Like, and I think that's where it came from. What's up, Bro? 
Yeah. So uh, he used, so this guy, he was kind of out there too. He used energy as a means of healing. And I watched a video and, and he was, he was out there. He was a little strange, but it was only one, it was only one video, but he did appear slightly strange to me. So Joe really got into some things that were definitely not mainstream. And some of it was even like way out there stuff. So Joe ended up becoming a rolfer in 1972. Looking at rolfing was our episode one. He worked with Ida through 1978. He became the first president of the Rolf Institute in 1975. But during that time, he also became a structural patterner with Judith Aston. Now, Judith is still teaching today, so I'm going to put her technique on the list because I want to learn more about what, what that is. So Joe really liked Ida's work, but he also had all this other training in movement and body energy awareness. So in 1978, he took a page from his cousin, uh, Jed Clampett, and moved out to California. Now, while it is true, Jed was out shooting at some food, went up through the ground, came some bubbling crude, oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea, and he moved his family out to Beverly Hills. But, okay, they weren't really cousins. And the younger folk are not going to get that one. You're going to have to go Google who is Jed Clampett because I'm not going to tell you. So Joe moved out to California. He started Heller Work. Now, sad news, true, sad news. This is June of 2024, and Joe actually just passed away in May of 2024. He uh, went to the website, and they actually said, you know, here's some seminars coming up. Um, and then it was like, oh, he just passed away. So that is sad news. What is the theory and philosophy of Heller work? I found an interview with Joe, and so these are his actual words. And he said, Heller work developed out of an evolution of rolfing. I was trained as a rolfer. Joe, not me. I was trained as a rolfer. I knew Ida Rolf, and I ended up adding to her body work a couple of things that I thought would complement it and make it more comprehensive. Basically, Heller work consists of three things merged together. So the first thing is deep tissue body work, which aims to restructure the body and realign it with gravity by using direct pressure to release fascial holdings. See? Even Heller says that Rolfing is deep tissue. Okay, can't get away from that. Number two, movement re-education, which aims to teach people more effective ways of using their bodies. How to use your body in common daily activities, sitting, standing, walking, reaching, as well as movement, movement patterns in sports, hobbies, and other activities. And number three, and this is going to go with all the people that we just talked about that he studied with, dialogue. Become aware and more responsible for how your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs relate to posture and overall health. Learn how an attitude shift can expand your body's health. So what is the dialogue? The dialogue in a Heller work session is arranged along a certain theme. Each session has a theme. These things, themes came about out of my tendency to talk to my clients and ask them questions like, what are the major areas of stress in your life? And I noticed that that was a question. I kind of made it a statement. What are the major areas of stress in your life? There we go. I noticed that when I work on certain body parts, people tended to talk about certain topics. For instance, in the third session of Heller work, which is the arms and the shoulders, the theme for that session is reaching out because to me, we express our aggression through our arms. I mean, both aggression in the positive sense of the word as in reaching out to make contact with someone, reaching out to give and receive, as well as aggression in the negative sense, as in anger, hostility, and violence. In that respect, we call our arms our weapons. 
He goes on to say, in the course of the third session, we work out the client's patterns of aggression. We start first with the positive patterns. How hard or easy is it for them to make contact with people? Do they have preferences between giving and receiving? Are they the kind of people that go after the things that they want and need in life? Or do they wait for them to come to them? And things like that. On the negative side are things that, what makes you angry? Where do you feel the anger in your body? And how do they express it when they do express it? And where do they store it if they don't express it? So I found this part, it's kind of funny because I'm in the middle of a book right now by Mel Robbins and it's called Take Control of Your Life. And in it, she interviews people and with each person so far, she gets into this last part. She gets into, you know, when this specific thing is said to you, where do you feel it in the body? So that's kind of interesting. You know, I'm reading a book about it and then here Heller work is talking about it. All right, now, this is me personally. Now, this is me talking. This is just me. I'm not sure I would like this. It, it may be fantastic for me, right? But I'm not sure I would like to be on the table and then talking about, you know, where do you hold your anger? I'd probably be like, right there where you're pushing because that's the spot that hurts. So let's just work that out. I, I probably need work like this. I'll, uh, I'll be honest, but I don't know if I would like the talking part. Okay. Who should get this done and what does it say it fixes? Heller work improves posture and brings the body's natural structure into proper balance and alignment. This realignment can bring relief from general aches and pains, improve breathing, and relieve physical and mental stress. Heller work has also been used to treat such specific physical problems as chronic back, neck, shoulder, and joint pain, as well as repetitive stress injuries, including carpal tunnel syndrome and things like that. It's frequently used to treat and prevent athletic injuries. So what does the practitioner do? Since this is based off Rolfing, a lot of this is the same, but here's what Joe says. The superficial sections, sections one through three, focus on the surface or the superficial layers of the body's connective tissue, which are associated with those muscles that are near the surface of the body. And this is also called the sleeve muscles. This is the same as Rolfing. Here's what Heller added to Ida's work. Develop, developmentally, the superficial sections deal with issues of infancy and childhood, breathing, standing up, and reaching out. Then we have the core section, sections four through seven. And when we talk about the core, we mean the deeper muscles and connective tissue of the body. The nature of the core muscles, also called the intrinsic muscles, is that they assist us in fine motor movement. These muscles must be used in order to produce graceful and fluid movement. For instance, Tai Chi, Yoga, and Pilates relies on the refined movement of the intrinsic muscles. Now this is Heller talking here. He goes, prior to Heller work, these muscles are often underutilized, tight, and immobile. Now to this section, Heller added, the core sections focus on developmental issues of adolescence, control and surrender, gut feelings, holding back feelings, and intellectual development. I would probably just go in and ask Joe, hey, Joe, can we start with the core section? Because uh, I know that my intellectual development was stunted. So let's not waste any time. Let's just go straight to it. <laughs> The, okay, the next one, the integrative section. So now this is going to be sections 8 through 11. Now remember, Rolfing only had 10. So this is 8 through 11, and these are designed to integrate the core and the sleeve. During these sections, the practitioner balances and aligns the unique patterns of each client's body. In the earlier sections, a clear map existed to, to guide the flow of each section. Because each body is so unique, the integrative sections have no general map. The specific focus of these sections is on rotational patterns of the body. 
And I think this may come up in another video, another technique that I'm looking at right now. And so this may come up in, in that as well. So the 11th section is unique that in that it does not necessarily include body work. And it integrates the Heller work series with your entire life. So the purpose of this section is completion, self-expression, and empowerment. Developmentally, the integrative section focuses on issues of maturity, masculine and feminine styles and values, integration, and coming out into the world. Now these days, coming out into the world means something different, but okay. What professions do they teach? How much do the classes cost? And how many CEUs do you get? It appears that Heller work is not done for CEUs. It's an entire program which consists of 1,025 clock hours. So they broke it out. They have five 15-day on-site intensive classroom trainings. And in between these five 15-day classroom trainings, there are four three-month online distance learning segments. So if you just add that up, if you were to go straight through, that's just over 14 months. I'm sure you get some breaks in there, but that's, that's about 14 months. They say the cost is anywhere from 19 to $25,000. Man, I keep looking at what all these other techniques are charging. Okay, let's look at what are the similarities and the differences between Heller work and the MYK system. Heller said that there were three components to his work, the first being the deep tissue, which is based off of Ida Rolf's work. I don't want to rehash all of that again. So to see the similarities and the differences in the body work, Go check out episode one on Rolfing around the 17 minute and 30 second mark, which is about where we're at here. After the body work, the first difference in, is the movement re-education. They're going to show you how to walk, sit, stand, do your hobbies, play sports, and teach you how to do these things more effectively. Now, I, I have an opinion on this, but first, let me state I have absolutely no idea how they go about making changes to these things. But I do know that if you try to hold yourself in a different posture than what's normal for you, you can do that as long as you're thinking about it. So if someone were to say to you, hey, throw your shoulders back and sit up straight and stand up straight, and you can do this and you can stand in this position until somebody comes up and they go like, hey, Mike, how you doing? And then you go, I'm doing pretty good. And your shoulders flop forward because now you're not consciously thinking of it. And so that's just with posture. That's not movement, which would be even harder to retrain. So this movement re-education, in my opinion, is going to take a long time. Okay, the second difference is that in Heller work, you talk to the person. If, if they find a knot or a trigger point, they, they will relate this to a specific time in your life. Now, the Rolf Institute started talking about bringing up the emotions and sometimes that causing pain. So I think there may be some overlap between Heller taking the hands-on portion of, of Ida Rolf's work and then Rolfing taking some of the emotional information from Heller work. And, and I think over the years, they're, they're, they've probably kind of mixed and matched a little bit. Uh, I don't think that Ida gets so much into it that, uh, as uh, Heller work does, the, the emotional component, but they do talk about it. So now people ask me all the time if patients or clients have emotional releases with the MYK system. It happens, but it's definitely not something that I'm trying to do. I've, I've had people cry and, and I'll ask them, I'll be like, you know, what's going on? And they're like, I don't know why I'm crying. And sometimes like I, I released a girl's neck one time and I released it and she started crying. And so I stopped 
And then she just kept crying. And I go, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know why I'm crying. And I was just like, geez, okay. So, but the next day she came back and she goes, oh my gosh, I had this back pain for 20 years and it's gone. And that is fairly common. When somebody gets an emotional release, it's fairly common that they feel a lot better and they clear up some things that they problems, physical problems that they had had for years. So there is something to that emotional component. But for me, I just don't like to mess with it if I don't have to. So the first similarity between Heller work and the MYK system is they want to balance the posture. Now, how we go about balancing the posture is night and day difference because they're trying to release the fascia and we're trying to make changes or clear the signals of one long, along one nerve pathway. The second similarity is we say we treat a lot of the same conditions. The third difference is the treatment itself. With Heller work, everyone is getting the same treatment. It's the, the, the same 10 series. It's, it's 11 with Heller work. With the NYK system, we find the nerve root problem specific to you. So each person gets the treatment that is specifically needed by them. The fourth difference is it looks like Heller work is more like going to school. You have to take all 1,025 hours over the course of about one and a half years, and it costs almost $25,000. The MYK system offers CEUs to the different professions, PTs, OTs, MTs, ATs, DCs, personal trainers, nurses, along with some other professions as well. So Heller work sounds interesting. It really does. Um, I don't know that I would like to get into the emotional stuff, but maybe if I did, I could get rid of some of my issues that I've had for 40 years. I would just have to be prepared to let it out, and I don't know how that would go. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I have a lot more videos coming. If you made it this far, smile.